I had been sleeping 16 hours a day for 14 months. Wow. And saying, God, is this all there is for me? How can you use me if I am stuck in bed, not feeling well? And so I started bargaining with him. <laughs> mm. If you make me better, I promise I will live more boldly for you. I will speak out. I will go. I will do. I will do whatever. I have a simple prayer. Yeah. Dear Lord, I can't. You can. Please do. Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor. We've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Hello and welcome to this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. I'm Todd Isburner. Yes. Wendy's co-host. No, I'm your co-host. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. That's equal. You know, today <laughs> is uh, is pretty exciting in terms of what we're going to talk about uh, with our guest. And I'll just give you a little hint. You know, Jesus said to uh, Peter, John, and James that he was going to make them, well, it was Peter, John, and Andrew probably, that he's going to make them, and then James too, fishers of men, because uh -huh. they were, you know, they're their pastime favorite thing to do and their business their was business. Fishing. fishing. Yeah. We're Where gonna, are you going with this? We're going to talk to somebody today who's doing both. <laughs> yeah. She is fishing for people and uh -huh. fishing for fish. And it is fascinating what you're going to hear from her yeah. and what you're going to learn because um, this is a woman who's been through it. And she's been she, through a lot. She's oh, got man. incredible breakthroughs. She's going to talk about what happens when there's a stronghold of an addiction that takes over and what the outcome of those addictions can produce in your life. Yes. And she's going to share about how when you pay attention, you can hear God speak. Mm. That's exciting. She's got some great stories there. Yeah. And how he lines up divine appointments in the whole process yeah. when you're really listening carefully. Uh, you're going to learn about the meaning and the way to do true surrender. Like not just the word, but you literally go through a process of surrender and what happens as a result. Yeah. And how you can live out your dreams no matter the age and stage you're in. Yes, so it's very encouraging. So yes, our guest today will share about her challenges of yesterday and talk about her dreams of today and how she's living them. But our guest is Nancy Willette, and she's going to share how you can overcome your biggest challenges and live a full life doing what you love. Yeah. Her backstory includes uh, 42 years of recovery from alcohol addiction, divorce, incredible health challenges, uh, an abundance of stuff, she says, and then the, uh, the simple life that followed that. And she's grateful for the journey that's shaping her. Yeah. And Nancy will share about how prayer, resilience, and a dash of dreams, I love that, a dash of dreams, can get you through anything. Uh, formerly involved in the financial planning world, she's moved on now to living the adventures she's always dreamed of. Home is now living the in an RV, yeah, right. <laughs> That's her life with her dog <laughs> while fly fishing and instructing others the skill of becoming this accomplished angler. Yes, and she's living like Todd said the life that she's only once imagined, and she believes that you can do the same. Her mantra is "Never give up on your miracle." Enjoy the show. Welcome, Nancy Willette, to your biggest breakthrough. We are so excited to have you. Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. Yes, so you know, fun. You know, as we mentioned in, in the intro, you are a very unique person. And I mean that in a really great way. <laughs> right now, we're talking to Nancy, who is living in her RV yes. because she's moved out of, um, well, what would be most of us for a normal lifestyle into one that is very unique, but that fits her really well. Because you're like living the life right now. You're like living your dreams. I am, Todd. Yeah, um, I have been really blessed, you know, I guess um, out of my life, God has created a tapestry mm. and somehow now that I'm over 60, <laughs> I can admit that uh, the pieces have come together uh, that's and beautiful. what started as an early passion for fishing and the outdoors and hunting has now come full circle and I'm I'm blessed that it can be a way of life for me and my ministry. 
Um, That's so cool. We can touch on it. I don't know if you want me to delve into it right now. We want to hear it all, Nancy. And first of all, I I just want to mention that I know the Holy Spirit led me to you. Todd hates, and I'm going to use the word hate, hates social media. But this is one (laughs) reason where I'm like, social media can be good. Because I saw a post that you made, and I thought, wow, I really need to get to know this Nancy. She's Mm. got a lot of breakthrough stories. And then we found that you've got some um, mutual friends. And I thought, wow, this is is a God connection. Not not only that, on top of that. We've even had... We were talking before we started before we started recording. To, oh, we're talking about Paul Wessel. Paul Wessel, Wessel. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And did an episode with him yeah. uh, a little earlier. But to find out that you, I mean, like you grew up right down the road, yeah. <clears throat> way down in the woods, <laughs> and amazing. so it wasn't unusual for you to get up in the morning and go duck hunting. And we're going to hear more about that. But I, I, it's just so amazing. We had no idea that we were that close in that close proximity and never knowing it. But we're going to find out more about just what developed in your life that brought you to where you are. Yes. But let's go back first and just some of your backstory, uh, because you have an avid faith right now, but it wasn't always that way. So walk us through from the early stages of your journey and how you Mm. got to where you are. Mm. You got time. Just go for it. (laughs) Okay. Well, my very early stages is um, that I was raised in a um, Christian home, but more of a structured, I'm not going to name it because I don't want to be. And then in 1970, I was always active in my church youth group, that kind of thing, but it was more structured dogma ritual. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And then in um, 1978, I was invited by a friend to attend a Christ encounter weekend retreat. And so November 26th, 1978, I under became aware of what, what it means to really Mm. have a personal walk with Jesus and what a Mm. relationship. And I can't say I was really great right after that. Right. (laughs) I mean, I went out and I was still, kind of lost, um, sowing some wild oats. Um, Alcohol became a problem for me, and I knew it. Um, I would pray that God would remove this obsession to drink because I was one of those that, I guess, kind of a binge drinker, right? I could go three weeks, but then I would have one, and then I wouldn't remember how many after that. So, How long was uh, alcohol a problem in your life? Oh, very much so. Yeah. Well, how, 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 how many years? Oh. How long? Uh, six years from okay. the time really that I was 15. I quit drinking when I was 21 by the grace of God. Okay. Yeah. Only by the grace of God. I Did mean, you know, it, during, I'm just curious, Nancy, during those years of uh, sort of sowing your wild oats and whatnot. Um, and on top of that, you, you had made this commitment to be a Jesus follower, but you're doing stuff that doesn't line up with being a Jesus follower. Were you really aware of that or did you sort of just sort of try to numb that out? Oh, numbing was good. <laughs> numbing right. was required. No. Uh, yeah. I was, um, I went to college in Arizona at Arizona state and I joined a sorority and here's what I felt. I mean, the hypocrisy in my life was so large that I was chaplain of the sorority I was in mm. and I had, really three distinct groups of friends. I had my partying friends, my church friends, and my intellectual friends. And God forbid any one of them should overlap. They would see the inconsistency in my life. Mm. And that was the pain. That was the pain of feeling like I was hiding or trying to be a chameleon. I knew who God wanted me to be. I knew that when I drank, God went further away, Mm. not because of him, (laughs) because of me. So I came to a crisis point. Um, I had quit in the spring of 81. Um, My father was in recovery. He went through treatment and I went through family week and got the education that scared me. Mm. I was like, what do you mean blackouts aren't normal? (laughs) You know, what do you mean? having more drinks than you intended is not normal. How do you mean drinking alone is not, you know, a good idea? And so um, 
I said I would quit. I, would, I told this family counselor I would quit for a year, and I made it three and a half months. Hmm. I had told, I was starting my senior year, and I had told all my friends at college, I quit drinking, just so you know. I, I, hmm. Well, for sure, I told my partying friends, right? And um, I remember three of my sorority sisters picking me up at the airport when I flew back after being in Minnesota for the summer. Uh, it they picked me up at the Phoenix airport and I walked off the plane bombed and they Mm. were like, wait a minute. I thought you said you quit drinking. And right away I was like, Oh, that was a really bad idea. Hmm. Well, that began the last three weeks of my drinking career. That was when I knew that alcohol was toxic for me. It was a tool of Satan. This is not good. Um, And the last day that I was, that I drank. Um, I had been with the church group. We had done a weekend retreat up in Northern Arizona and we did a road rally from Tempe to Payson to a friend's parents' cabin. And we would stop at every bar along the way. So there's a lot of bits and pieces I don't remember but I do remember getting to the cabin, sitting around a big long pine table with friends playing cards. But of course, if you lost your card hand, you had to take a shot of something. And I woke up the next morning with very little memory and no one would talk to me. Hmm. There's 14 people and no one will speak to me. Wow. And I was, I was clueless. I was like, oh my gosh. You know, I walk into the kitchen to get coffee and I say good morning and they're in clusters of two or three and they're kind of looking at me and like, and I know, so I took my coffee and went outside, went back in and something told me, I I got my Bible. We all had our Bibles. It was a church retreat, the strangest (laughs) church retreat ever. But (laughs) Self, self-organized by a bunch of college kids. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I um, took my Bible and went for a walk. And I got so hopeless and despairing. I, I, this is a hard story to tell because going back there, it does remind me of God's redemption and how mm-hmm. much. But I think it's important because... Um, I started hiking into the pine trees, right? And I went back to the garage of this cabin and I found a rope. Oh. And I went out into the woods and I found a stump and I found a tree with a good limb. And I sat down and I opened my Bible and I said, God, I'm sorry. I know this is wrong. I can't do this anymore. There's clearly no hope for me. Alcohol has beaten me. I'm, I'm done. And I open my, I'm like, please give me a sign. And I open my Bible and it was Romans. And it was talking about never despair, never have lose hope. God can do all things. And the next thing I hear is my friend, John, walking through the woods, hollering my name, looking for me. Wow. And I was like, someone cares. And he, I, I finally spoke up and I said, I'm over here. He walks to me. He looks at the situation, sees I'm sitting on a stump, looks up, sees the rope. He said, oh, no, girlfriend, you are not doing this on my watch. <laughs> and he proceeded to literally pack up my stuff and drive me back to Scottsdale, to my parents' home there. And stayed with me until the next morning and he called and got an appointment for me at the Scottsdale mental health clinic where they did assessment. Oh, so wow, wow, Nancy, wow, wow. thank you for That's sharing a powerful that story. because some, but somebody listening has been through something similar mm-hmm. on right? some level or knows somebody that is struggling. And when we are, are in that moment of despair, all we have to do is ask God for help and look what happens. Look what happens. The miraculous, right? Exactly. God always hears our, our requests and our prayers. Yes. And yeah. I mean, by the grace of God, I have stayed through 
trials and tribulations in my life that a lot of people might not, you know, I mean, once I realized that what God was doing for me, I knew I had to share that with others. Yeah. Mm. yeah. It was like, okay, this is part of my ministry. So I have a story for you. Fast yeah. forward 15 years now, right? And I've, I had been active in AA, right? Or 12 step programs. And I had a young woman that I was her sponsor and she wanted to learn how to fly fish. So I had fly fishing had entered my life when my kids were little and um, she wanted to learn to fly fish. And I said, okay, let's go during the middle of the week, right after trout opener. And we went down to a, a state park in a remote, pretty remote area. And we get there and the forest ranger says, take your pick of campgrounds. There's only one guy here and he's been here for about three weeks. So no worries. So we, we set up camp and we go to hike to the river to fish and we see this man and his campsite. And I'll be honest, he looked really scary. <laughs> we were like, ooh, okay, we set up camp next to the ax murderer. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Deliverance, yeah. And um, <clears throat> he, uh, we chatted just a bit, but he would not make eye contact. We were kind of like, so we decided we would take turns sleeping that night, literally, mm. like with one eye open. <laughs> mm. um, and the next morning, we get up and we have bacon and eggs and the coffee pot is on the campfire and we have no coffee cups. We have no way to drink this coffee. So I looked at my friend and said, I'm going to go ask the ax murderer if we can borrow a couple of coffee cups. <laughs> I'm not back in 10 You're minutes. Right. Yeah, go, right. get, go get the park <laughs> ranger. Yeah. Yeah. So I mm. hike over there and he's still sitting at his little table looking rougher than he did the night before. Mm. And I said, I'm so sorry to bother you, but I'm wondering if you would have a couple of coffee cups we could borrow. Now, he still would not make eye contact. His head is down and he's like, yep. And he gets up and he goes to his very organized campsite, opens this cupboard, takes out two enameled coffee mugs and hands them to me. In the meantime, I'm standing looking at his table and I something prompted me and I said, would you like to join us for breakfast? I mean, oh. I could smell bacon and eggs coming through the woods, right? Uh -huh. And as far as I could see, he had no food. So he's like, no, thanks. And I stood there. I just, I don't know. The Holy Spirit just stopped me, right? And I looked at the book and it was called The Care of the Soul. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, I had read it six months earlier. It was written by a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I said, are you finding the answers you're looking for? I knew it was about seeking. I knew it was about ending it. I knew it I knew what it was about. And I ended up, I, he said, nope, not really. And I said, okay, well, thanks for the coffee cups. I'll bring them back in a few minutes. And I turned and I started walking back through the little path in the woods and about 20 feet away, something stopped me. And I turned around and I said, Steve, I'd really like you to join us for breakfast. And now he looked up at me for the first time. He looked me in the eyes. And he said, how did you know my name? And I said, oh, I thought you mentioned it. And he said, no, I wouldn't have mentioned it. Wow. And now I'm thinking, oh, for sure, axe murderer. He's hiding. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I have chills because the Holy oh, Spirit man. told you his name. Wow. Exactly. So, I, mm -hmm. so he looked threatened. So I said, oh, I thought you mentioned it. And he said, no, I wouldn't have mentioned. I said, well, maybe I associated you with my brother. That's my brother's name. And I'm backpedaling. Mm -hmm. I am just like, whoa, don't yeah. threaten this man. And I finally just stood there. And I said, so will you join us? And he said, I'll come over in a few minutes. Huh. I was like, cool. Okay. So, I mean, after I get out of his sight, I am running on the little path through the woods I get the coffee cups there. And I said to my friend, I invited the axe murderer for breakfast. <laughs> and she He'll said, be here in a we, few minutes after he gets the axe. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and I said, uh, let's sit down. We need to pray. 
there is a reason. And I said, because somehow I knew his name. And she went, really? I'm like, apparently. So we sat down, we prayed, we did our little devotional daily meditation devotion book. And we had one, you know, that was faith based or one was AA based. And we just, Steve's coming through the woods. We dish up the food. We sit down at this little table. And so, you know, Dawn is across from me. Steve is on my left. And I said, Steve, we're going to bless the food. Is that okay? He's like, yep. And I prayed a prayer I could have never, I could have never prayed. You know, I said, dear heavenly father, wow, it's a beautiful day. It's another day you have renewed us. You are bringing us to you every moment of this day. We know this is not about fishing, Lord. We want you to show us why you've brought us our new friend, Steve. Help us to share your encouragement and your strength and your hope. And bless the food, right? And now as I'm going on and on, which I don't often do, but I feel this tap on my foot under the table. And I look up and it's my friend Dawn and she's pointing to Steve. And I look over, right? I've got, we've all got our heads down and he has silent tears streaming mm. down mm. his face. Wow. Yeah. And I put my hand on his forearm and I said, Steve, do you want to talk? And he, he's like, yep, give me a minute. And he said, are those your books? The two devotional books, right? I said, yes. And he said, are you in recovery? And I said, yes, I've been sober 15 years. And Dawn pipes up, I have nine months. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he said, so you believe in God? I said, absolutely. I believe in Jesus Christ as my savior. He can, he can redeem us. And he just shook his head and tears still coming. He said, you aren't going to believe this. He said, I had eight years of sobriety. He said, I am an at-risk teacher in a little Southern Minnesota school district. I'm not going to name it. Um, and he said, I have been hiding out here drinking for three weeks. He said, no one knows where I am. Not my wife, not my kids, not my students, not the principal, no one. Wow. And he said, I haven't seen another person or talked to another person in the last two weeks. He said, and I had given God until noon today to do something or I was going to blow my brains out. Oh, my word, Nancy. Wow. Wow. And well, we, how are oh, being obedient, huh? Oh. Well, <laughs> yeah. Even it's when not it doesn't about make me. sense. Right. It's not about well, me. You know what yeah. it did for me at that moment? was we all sat there. We all had God bumps, right? Mm -hmm. We just sat yeah. in silence. Yeah. And I said, well, Steve, God is clearly not done with you. And we are going to help you, right? Pack up your camp. I said, could I have the phone number for your sponsor? I'm going to go to the, we didn't have cell phones back then. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to go to the ranger station and I'm going to call Scott and we'll, he, maybe he can meet us and we'll hand you off to him. And I, and we all just were absolutely, um, for me, it, it was so impactful mm -hmm. because think of how the things that had to be orchestrated, yeah. right? right? We yeah. had to decide to go fish. We had to set up camp near him. We had to forget coffee cups. Yeah. We all and you had to be it, obedient to invite him for breakfast. You know, it just and, yeah. again, Nancy, it just it just says and shows and proves that the love of God is unstoppable. Mm. And even though Steve didn't know what the outcome would be from all of this, he just knew he was in deep enough trouble that he wanted to end it unless God intervened. Similar to what you experienced, obviously your stories have that similarity, so God could use exactly. that. Exactly. But I just I want to go back to a couple of things because uh, first and foremost, I mean, again, God's um, always on the hunt to, I guess, to allow us the opportunity to have him prove to us how much he loves us. And 
he doesn't want us to put ourselves in the kind of positions that you did or Steve did. He'd rather do it an easier way. Nevertheless, nothing stops his love. But I want to just talk a little bit about the pain that's involved when you're hiding. Because you hid for several years. You had three different groups of friends. You were the chameleon who knew how to adapt to each group so that you could spare yourself the embarrassment and the humiliation of who you knew you to be. There's probably a lot of people listening that might be like that as well. That's what I'm wondering, you know, yeah. what, what, because that brings about, I think, such a deep pain, this, this humil humiliation and this embarrassment and this shame that we feel because we know we're really not who we're, you know, presenting ourselves to be. And it's exhausting. And, it doesn't matter if alcohol is involved or whatever is involved. You know, there's just these symptoms in our lives and we just don't like it. It, it creates such pain. So talk to that person right now who's experiencing this. They're sort of hiding out. They're not free to be themselves and they're in pain over it. Can you talk to them for a minute? Wow. So shame is such a tool of Satan. I mean, however you want to look at it, Satan it, it's bad, right? I knew I had a disconnect. The inside did not match the outside, hmm. right? There was yeah. what you saw was not at all what I felt or how I felt I was living. Um, and I, I would cry out. I would be like, you know, help me reconcile this. Help me be better. Help me be the person I know you want me to be. Mm. And um, I think it was when I finally like just totally surrendered and got on yeah. my knees yeah. and yeah. said, I have a simple prayer. Yeah. Dear Lord, I can't, you can, please do. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's good. I can't, you can, please do. Please do. Yeah, yep. that's, that's a good. beauty. That's a beauty. So, and a lot of times, um, in situations in life, I'll just do this. I don't know if you mm. can see me. Yep, right? yep. holding up your hands. Yep, yep she's and opening up is, her hands. I surrender. You're in charge. Um, I saw one of the best memes on social media the other day. It was a photo of depicted Jesus with all these antique steering wheels. And it was said, all the wheels that Jesus has taken over the years. And it was, oh, that's funny. Jesus and I mean, that's wheel. kind of how I feel a lot of the time. But Why is it yeah. so hard, uh, Nancy? Why is it so hard to surrender? Because that is the answer. When you it completely, is. totally give up trying on your own and you receive the love of God and you receive the power of the Holy Spirit that can make those changes. But why is it so tough for people and me and all of us to let go? There are so many ways to, so many addictions, right? I mean, God has pruned my vine over the years. I mean. And look how you're flourishing now. Food, you know, <laughs> sexual, I'm not that I've been horrible, but all the things. Sure. Had to go um, because I knew Satan was wanting to get his foot in the door again and surrendering everything has been a process like peeling the onion, right? Mm. You peel another layer, you cry some tears, you surrender, you kind of learn to function. Then you get to another layer of the onion and you peel the layer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so that's really been more my, my process and my surrender. Um, so I have a really simple prayer that I say every morning and it, actually came from the 12-step program, but I've tweaked it just a little bit. It's, dear Lord, I offer myself to you to build with me and do with me as you will. Relieve me of the bondage of self. Okay, mm. that's the shame. That's, that's the whatever mm. we're doing that we feel like we shouldn't be doing the that flesh. maybe our spouse doesn't know about, you know. Um, relieve me of the bondage of self so that I may better do your will. Take away my difficulties so that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help in your love, in your life, and in your or in your power, in your love, and in your way of life. In Jesus' name. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. if I start my day with getting right sized, <laughs> um, God gets bigger. So mm. yeah. That's so good. 
yeah, I mean, it's if in someone the is despairing, they need, to, you know, right now, if there's someone out there hurting that feels like they can't round the corner, they can't improve their life, you know, God uses people. Reach out. Yes, Connect. Yeah. Find Nancy. Find a church. Yeah. Find a pastor. Find a, a, a group. Um, you know, I mean. Go yeah, have I, breakfast with somebody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like Call Steve. Yeah. When I'm struggling, I have my top four, right? And, you know, they're women that are dear, dear friends, some from my Bible study, some from church, some from recovery. Mm-hmm. And, and I just reach out and I just say, help me sort this out. Mm-hmm. Show me where That's God's good. gonna show up in this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Help me That's find so the God nugget in this. Um, I love it. So Nancy, as you're talking mm-hmm. about surrender, because really that, that is, what it's about. That's, it's all about letting the Lord lead us and we just are on his path and being obedient. And so that takes uh, surrender. But I want to talk about surrender and kind of as a segue, how does surrender kind of play into what you do now um, for, uh, it's, it's not, I wouldn't even call it a profession because it's what you love to do, but as a fly fishing instructor. I mean, you were in the financial world at one point, so we got to get this connected here. You were in the financial planning uh, and uh, advising. I don't know. You'll have to tell me more about that. And then doing what you do now. I'm like, how does that even happen? So there has to be surrender there for that to take place. And then I'm wondering about the surrender within the act of fly fishing altogether as an analogy. I'm sure there's some sort of surrender. I've never done it. It's on my live it list. I'm going to come see you. And we're going to go fly fishing. But I want us to kind of bring in that surrender part with, with the rest of your story. Well, I think part of it is she surrendered to the little girl in her that wouldn't grow up. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. That's Which is good. great. That's awesome. You know, it's interesting how um, my path, right, includes divorce and a lot of those challenges. And then in 2015 or 13, and in about 18 months, um, the Lord graduated my brother, my dad, my mom, and my dog mm. in a short period of time, right? Wow. And I was, I I felt like such an orphan. So I was like, God, it's you and me now. <laughs> Hello, mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> are you still here? <laughs> um, and within about a year after that, I got really sick. Um, I had some major health challenges. I had gastrointestinal issues. And by the time they had me swallow a pill camera, um, it came back and showed three carcinoid tumors in my small intestine. Mm -hmm. Here's my, I've had so many miracles filled with grace. I mean, I'm still here, so I'm still going to show up and serve. That's right. um, I, uh, they said, yeah, you have three carcinoid tumors. We need to do surgery right away. They took me in for surgery and I had put out a prayer request on social media, right? And all of my relatives and friends all over, I mean, I knew churches were praying for me and the surgeon got in there and couldn't find them. Wow. (laughs) Praise God. We had had photos. I saw the photos, right? I saw the photos of the tumors and, and he's like, I'm coming out of anesthesia. And he, I said, so did we get them? He said, you must be living right, darling. I said, why? He said, we couldn't find them. And I went, oh, <laughs> what do you say to that? Mm. So God's um, healing hand upon you. I mean, miraculous. Mm-hmm. That's, so, that's yes. so encouraging. So he wound up, though, taking out like all 28 feet of my intestinal tract to be very thorough, right? And manhandling it centimeter by centimeter and packing it back in. And I know you understand that gut health is like super sure. important. Well, absolutely. I mean, my health went like this and I got down to a size zero. Um, you know, that's not me. I'm I'm a I was a swimmer. I'm kind of muscular <laughs> and I, I lost all this weight. I couldn't keep food in me. No nutrition was getting into my bloodstream. Mm. Um, And so I was bedridden with chronic migraines. I had neuropathy in my feet and hands. I had vertigo. I finally went, after six months, I went to the Mayo Clinic. I had seven specialists. They had no way to connect the dots. I'd had some vision decline and a hearing loss. 
It was so bizarre. Um, so they tried, you know, 29 different prescriptions. They had me on at that point, 12 prescriptions daily. And a friend, my best friend brought me some all natural nootropic supplements and said, Good. try these. And I said, Oh no, talk to the hand. I have had MRIs, CT scans, spinal taps. Blood. I said, I am just done. And she said gently, as only a best friend can, you have no quality of life. Mm. How is God going to use you? Mm. And I went, touche. I mean, <laughs> I had been sleeping 16 hours a day for 14 months. Wow. And saying, God, is this all there is for me? How can you use me if I am stuck in bed, not feeling well? And so I started bargaining with him. <laughs> mm. If you make me better, I promise I will live more boldly for you. I will speak out. I will go. I will do. I will do whatever. So good. And so look at you when now. I, mm -hmm. I, when I got all better, right? Within two months, I was able to start tapering off of all those prescription drugs. Praise God. And um, yeah, I uh, knew then that it was going to be time COVID hit. I had bought this RV during COVID or early COVID. Um, and I drove up to Alaska and back by myself. Um, I love when you're adventurous not? spirit. Yeah. Like I, I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. I love an adventure and you know yeah. what? I might be overworking my angels. You know, they might, no, I might I'm sure you are. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, here she but goes on another they, they adventure. They are on an adventure oh, too. Man. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I know that I have this. I I don't want to push it, but I have divine protection. Mm -hmm. Thursday night, I'm in Oklahoma. There was a tornado that wiped out the roof of some cabins and a lodge, less than fifty yards from my RV. Oh my wow. word, Nancy! I woke up and there was debris all around my RV, and I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> Well, like, because God's like, yeah, remember that thing you and I have going on, Nancy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not done yet. I'm letting you live up uh, to that. That's yeah. right. I know. I know, he, I know that he is not done with me. And I that's have right. been um, miracle working on miracle. writing a book. Well, I've been working on writing a book Good. for his glory called Angels Have Fins. <sighs> and the story of Steve is one of the nine stories that follows some biblical principles. So each story as a, a real life story, right? I love it. Yeah. And, uh, and a little bit of scripture and a little bit of interpretation. It's a book of, it's a crossover book of faith. Yeah. I want to reach the fly anglers mm -hmm. who, when circling back to the other part of your question, I have discovered that people that want the serenity and peace and calm of standing in a stream and catching a fish in a beautiful place, they're very often seeking him. And so I try with um, now with all of the people that God sends me to fish with on the river to very gently work it into the conversation. Um, and my simple question is, do you have faith? And, and, and what sort of faith do you have? And um, the metaphor of fly fishing and my faith journey or anyone's really is that it's really all about patience and timing. It's not muscle. It's not self will. It's not, it is surrender. Yeah. It's like, it's gentle. Mm. It's, um, yeah. you know, I well, feel like every time I step in the stream, it's like, it, it's a reminder. Oh yeah. I'm getting baptized again today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think it's I think it's so fascinating because again, as a child, you love doing these things. You love duck hunting, you love fishing, you learned about it, and you never let it go. Uh, and then you go through a whole career uh, while still kind of doing your fun stuff on the side. And now here you are, like full time, living that life, fulfilling your dreams. But I do think you're going to get a hard time when you get to heaven. You're gonna you're gonna <laughs> get a you're gonna, listen. I think you're going to get a hard time from Peter. <laughs> John and Andrew, because oh. they're going to say, oh. well, you know, when, when Jesus told us that he wants fishers to be fishers of men, we had to give up our other fishing. How come you got to do both? That's good. <laughs> you, you fish for men while you're fishing. While I you're really flying. liked you oh, until that's... a minute ago, Todd. <laughs> 
Well, listen, it's <laughs> obvious. Listen, it's obvious that God really likes you because yeah. here you are seriously doing his work, it's inviting beautiful. people to have a relationship with the Lord in the river while Getting they're, the river yeah. while they're enjoying themselves, learning more about fishing. So we got to plan our trip to head to Oklahoma. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> like, I mean, it right. really is on my live it list. I don't have a bucket list. I've got a live it list and we're going to, yeah. so we're cool. going, we're going to go hang out with Nancy. You are such fishing. an inspiration and you have yeah. to finish that book because yeah. you do Angels have, have fans. tremendous stories of, God's miraculous intervention in your life and the lives of others. And this is what everybody is looking for, hoping for. And you're a great encouragement that God does care about you. He can and will intervene. Yeah. But will you be willing to surrender? And that yes. seems to me that just that's it's just so story. exemplary of your life. Yes. Well, and that's the thing I think to leave people with is if you are looking for God in your ordinary life, you will find him. Oh, Amen. Beautiful. Yeah. You will see him. He will show up. Yeah. But if you are in a tunnel of shame and pain and fear, and mm -hmm. it's going to make a hard, it's a harder time to break through that. Yeah. So just right. be That's open right. and look for everyday miracles. So. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Wow. Nancy, you're so precious. Yes. And thank you for joining mm. us. I know you didn't know what you were getting yourself into, but we are so <laughs> grateful that you said yes. And so would you leave us, um, just kind of pray us out, pray for the one listening that might be struggling and might be um, kind of a Steve right now. Mm. Wow. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just lift up to you every person hearing this podcast every set of ears ask that you would touch their hearts with hope touch them with your healing grace give them the promise of tomorrow let them know that there is nothing too big for you to handle and that if surrendering every little thing brings joy and peace and glory to you we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Mm. Bless you, Nancy. And we will Bless be seeing you, you sometime you. soon in the river. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Blessings. Guys. Thank All right. you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Well, what mm. a great episode. Mm. Another great Your Biggest Breakthrough episode. I just love all the stories and we could have gone on for a couple oh, of hours I, yeah. nancy has got so many <laughs> stories that's why i can't I'm, wait for her book to get come we're, out. And, and we're pushing her let's I'm gonna get keep that book finished yes, up exactly yes. <laughs> i think if there's probably one sort of thing that summarizes it for me it's that simple little prayer of hers her lord i can't you, you can. can please do please do oh. uh, i i hope you take that with you today yes and that the love of god is unstoppable mm. and it really really is so um i hope you enjoyed this episode make sure you share it with others but speaking of unstoppable make sure you go to your biggest breakthrough.com and get your very own copy of mind-blowing breakthroughs six powerful real life stories it's called Unstoppable, Divine Intervention in Overcoming Adversity. These are past uh, shows that Todd and I have done, and you can get your free ebook copy over there and grab the audio book as well. So it's a compilation. So it's real yeah. simple. You can read through these stories, take about maybe two minutes tops to read through. But they are encouraging. They, are. they give you hope. And I think the, yeah. I think the audio compilation is only about an hour and a half and that's six different stories. Just the highlights. I promise you get that. You will be encouraged. Pass it along to others as well. Yeah. All right. So thanks again for tuning into this episode of your biggest breakthrough. We'll catch you next time. Be blessed. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love spending time with you right here on Your Biggest Breakthrough Podcast. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. But until then, just head on over to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment and we would love to dialogue with you there. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.